interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Yo, it's Remember the Show. Slick with the flows, where the sparring can go. Who's gonna be on, man, you never will know. Guess you better tune in, cause we live from Chicago. Bilal Muhammad, that's the king of the tweets. Jason Anik looks like John, step his hands to his feet. Every Thursday, we gonna give you a treat. It's Remember the Show, hit play and repeat. Uh. And retweet, and retweet, and retweet, and retweet. It's remember the show, hit play and repeat. Ha. Yes, sir. Episode 24, remember the show. I'm Jason Anik, joined as always by Bilal Muhammad. Bully, huge pay per view, baby. Ray Longo already on site in Jacksonville. 15,000 fans in the building, belt in your division on the line. I'm excited, bro. I'm hyped, man. Just just feeling that fan energy back, feeling hearing the press conference today, hearing them cheer. It's like it's next level, but it's a little, little some different stuff where Masvidal stayed after, took pictures with fans. I was like, oh no, he's taking pictures with fans. And I saw the fans, they're taking like six feet away selfies with them. I was like, oh, okay, okay, we're safe. We're safe. We can't get another cancellation. I hear you, man. Well, <laughs> Certainly the weigh-ins will be tomorrow, so hopefully everything will go as scheduled, but it certainly can't wait for this weekend. Um, and we'll certainly get to that as we get into the Bix a little bit. Um, but I'm just going to start here because it's your show, but it's a little bit my show too. So, you know, the first thing I have written down on my notes here, it, it just says Crocs with a, with, a question, with a question mark. And then there's a follow-up question next to it, and it says Socks with a question mark after. Um so just a couple of things on that, and then I'll let you roll with the socks with the with the Crocs. I'm sure you know your fan base has seen what what happened to you this. We had a few days ago, but so you know I love all the Jordans you see out there. I got my closet around the corner. I got plenty of Jordans, but so I'm 42. But so 10 years ago, my wife and I basically, I, I was going to get Crocs, you know, and she basically said to me like, "You're not getting Crocs," you know. And so so 10 years later, still no Crocs. I'm pretty happy that she sort of forced me down that road. But so big thing for you, the Crocs. Um, so. Yeah. This is a big change right here. You know, I was always one of those guys like, oh, man, Brendan Allen, who was on the show last week, he would wear them all the time. We would always make it fun of them. Me and Jared would go hard at them all the time. But then my little brother ended up getting a pair because, like, he's always on his feet at work. He's like, oh, man, they're the most comfortable things in the world. I was like, dude, you look like a lame. You're a nerd, all this. Then I put my feet in there, and it was like like a light bulb. was like, it was like glowing. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. Right. I had to give me a pair. I had to do it. I hear you. I, I was like, I had to take all the shots, but it's okay. And it's okay. And you can go barefoot. You could even maybe unmatch the socks and it probably would still work. You might, you know, you might not see, but anyway, I just, I had a laugh about that. So dude, how you feeling, man? You're a couple of minutes away from another sip of water, first sip of water of the day, right? That hasn't occurred yet. Yes. Yeah. No, no, not yet. We still got five minutes, but, uh, feeling good. I had a couple of, uh, workout, couple workouts in today. Uh, the weather in Chicago is good, but man, I'm just hyped. I'm just hyped for this weekend. Man. This car is going to be epic. Just hearing, man, Valentina at the 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 press conference today, she was just like, she's so smooth with her words, but her words are just like powerful. She's like, I'm gonna kill her, <laughs> like like that. Like she'll have that type of tone, but then have that freaking those words come out of her mouth. I'm like, man, I just want to see what Val Valentina's gonna do. I'm telling you, it's all three of these fights have different sort of intrigues for me, but that I, I love watching Andrade fight too, you know, and she, and what, you know, her last step up to flyweight, she looked real sound in, in that size, you know, and she's so physically gifted. So I don't know. I'm, I'm excited for that, but, but Shevchenko man is just, um, it's going to be tough, man. Um, yeah, it's going to be epic. So I have to ask you, did you catch Jake Paul? Uh, I just have to get there quick because I know we're going to talk about the ultimate fighting championship, but I have to, you, did you catch that exhibition? I did. Oh, I did. I did catch it. And it was one of those where, you know, like I, I spar with Ben Askren before I trained with Ben Askren before. So like, I know where his level of hands were. And like I said, he's not one of those guys who I'm going to, I'm going to pick to, to be in a boxing tag team with me. I would never pick him to be my partner in the, that type of match. But like, Ben's one of those guys there. He's not afraid to fail. Like that's what I, I'll give him respect for that. Like he's one of the guys, he takes the loss like a man and he takes it like better than anybody I've ever seen. Like I know he's taking a big paycheck or whatever like that, but like when you're thinking about legacy and you're thinking about like later on in the future, when people go look back in the record books and things like that. And they say, well, this guy used to be a Bellator champion and a one FC champion, but he lost to a YouTuber. Like 
he's one of those guys. He doesn't care. Like he knows he's, it's all about his family, knowing that he just put food on the table, extra money on the table and, you know, securing his future. Um, like I said, like he's one of those guys. He doesn't care about losing uh, and getting embarrassed. Like he, he went against Jordan Burroughs, knowing that he was going to get killed against Jordan Burroughs in a wrestling match. <laughs> and, you know, he lost and he took it. But uh, with this, it was like, he knows that he's not a boxer. He knows that no, he doesn't have hands. Everybody knows that. Like the only thing I thought that he would have put up was, all right, if he was able to grab him a little bit, clinch a little bit with him. But I mean, all it takes is one punch in this game. I hear you. You know, what's a little tricky to me though, is there, there are, there is still a big portion of sports fans that, that aren't necessarily MMA fans. You know, I'm um, certainly like, like the way I grew up in Boston with the major sports, you just weren't, there wasn't necessarily, and granted the UFC wasn't what it was is now. But when you, when you think about it sort of in that context, to me, it's like as much of a joke as it was, man, I'd like to see sort of a, 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 a nice MMA striker, you know, sort of, you know, sort of shine a little positive light there on, on, on mixed martial arts. That being said, you know, they were talking on the Anakin Florian podcast is like, is, is Jake Paul ready to fight Woodley? You know what I mean? Is he going to step in the ring with Bilal Muhammad and strike? Yeah. You know? Yeah. The, but like, yeah, exactly. He, like he's at that point now where people are comparing it to Mayweather type thing where he's in charge of his own promotion. He gets to pick and choose now who he wants to fight. And obviously he's going to do it the smart way. If he's making, they said 1.5 million buys. Uh, I mean, why would you want to fight somebody like that? Knowing that, if you just keep winning, you're going to keep getting paid like that. And it's like, like you said, there, he has so many freaking people that don't understand sports, don't understand anything. All they understand is that he won. He beat an MMA champion. Like exactly. and they're thinking Jake Paul's the man. He's a beast. Exactly. He knocked him out in one round. He knocked out Nate Robinson. I was hearing people say that, Oh, his other opponents say he knocked out. I'm like, dude, there are none of them are real opponents. They're all the same. Exactly. Opponent. exactly. And frankly, including Askren, if it's boxing, we're talking about, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, like Ben Askren, like I said, if it's a street fight, Ben Askren is going to kill him. But exactly. obviously it was boxing, Ben Askren. And you could tell, like, if you ever watched that movie, The Great White Hype with Damon yeah. Wayans, like <laughs> Ben Askren came out there with his fat stomach, his gut was out. I and I was like, that made me think about that movie. I was like, bro, he did not train for this fight. He didn't exactly. train for this fight. Exactly. And I was like, come yeah, on, man. So anyway, there was a real fight on Saturday night as well. And there were certainly many leading up to it. But Robert Whitaker, um, this guy, man, it's, it's, I mean, imagine if Israel Adesanya didn't exist and he just had continued to just win like this. I mean, he, you know, when we talked last week, I mean, you, I, I hate to always say there are levels to it, but he just, he's yeah. on a different level than, than Kelvin Gastelum and as good as Gastelum is, and he's tough, man, he can take a punch, but Whitaker just so clean, so technical, just everything he did looked right all night. Honestly, on that day, like, I don't think anybody's going to beat him on that day. Like that day, he was so on with everything. Like, just moving backwards, striking backwards, his countering, his jumping in, jumping out, and then even his sneaky little takedowns. That's a little new weapon he's adding into his game, yep. and I think that's like that's showing you that he's changed since the Adesanya fight. And in that Adesanya fight, when you go back and you watch it, you're sitting there looking at it like he was just going out there trying to get that one punch knockout power, rushing him, and then like the Whitaker we see now, that's that's not that Whitaker. It's like a whole different person. And frankly, you know, he hasn't he hasn't finished anyone in four in four years, right? His his last finish, I think, it was Jacare four years ago. So you're not not finishing fights like our boy Kenny Florian, right, Cody? <laughs> um, but you know, so it is interesting when you talk about the Adesanya fight because I do think in the rematch, certainly, I think he getting into the cage against him again is an advantage, but also I think he's going to be, I think a little bit more disciplined and focused maybe on winning rather than necessarily finishing given that he's not necessarily as good as Whitaker is. He isn't necessarily this, this big time finisher in the UFC. Yeah. And I, and I think also it's going to play a big key in the part is that uh, being more active, like he's literally fought three times already within, I think it was within a year. So like being more active, like you see him getting better every single fight. When he fought at Asanya that one time, it was literally just coming off of two fights against R Yoel Romero. Like you yep. think that he was a champion for a while, but like he's literally only defending his belt twice against Romero and those are wars. So, and it's like a whole different fighter when you're comparing it to Adesanya. But now he's had three great performances against three way different opponents. And I think they're all going to help him level up to Adesanya the next time he fights him. And that has to be next. Uh, it, there's nothing I like. I know Vittori is really trying hard to get it and everything. But like, even if you're Vittori, you have to understand that that performance that Whitaker just put on right now, like there's nobody that's going to get that title fight before him. And, you know, good for Whitaker for going out and handling business in three fights to get back there. You know, he seemed a little reluctant to, you know, I think he obviously he was supposed to face Costa here. By the way, yeah. your tweet. 
I love that tweet you put out there. Whitaker's so good backing up. He was going to hurt Costa. I thought that was a very, I yeah. love that point because, you know, Costa certainly provided, would have provided a different challenge. Yeah, um, Costa, you know, Costa, he doesn't do nothing but move forward. So, like, obviously you could tell that that was in Whitaker's game plan is to to counter strike and hitting him as he's going backwards. And I mean, Gaslam does the same thing where he just moves forward a lot too. So uh, it would have been good because I think he would honestly, I think it would have been a, a bad matchup for Costa. Seeing how good he was moving backwards, like he, everything was just on point, his striking, his speed, everything was like just perfect. And uh, like I said, adding those new little takedowns into his arsenal is, is going to be a problem. Just fun to watch. Yep. All right, man. Well, we did. We haven't certainly touched on this weekend. I cut you a couple of times trying to get to it. So I think we'll touch on it. Let's get to Bullies Bix. So director oh, wait, Merrill. Uh, Julian right now. Hold up. We'll bring Julian and th- see what his thoughts are. Beautiful. We can go over the Bix at the end after the game show part. Works for me. Yo, what's up, y'all? We what's up, bro? Man. Oh, let's see it. What's going on with you guys, man? John looking good, looking glorious. Bully, look at you. They're shining over there. You're glowing today. <laughs> so, it. Julian, sorry, sorry to disappoint you, but I uh not John. Very close. Same DNA, but I'm actually his identical twin. So he, you know, this this lettuce on top of my head, you know, he doesn't represent, but it's good to meet you, man. Nice, oh. nice couple back-to-back choke wins. You must be feeling pretty good these days. I appreciate. It. I didn't. I did not even catch that. I was like, damn. I was like, damn. When did in it get long? <laughs> hey, zoom, zoom in on that white letter. <laughs> it, dude, that thing is just magnificent. Oh, okay. We got, I, this may be the first time and remember the show history where we got the solo. Yeah, it's about two years. You know, I'm from New England. The Patriots won the Super Bowl two years ago. Hasn't been snipped since. Hasn't been snipped since. That thing is glorious. Like. There's people that can pull off long hair and there's people that can pull off beards. And we got both of them on this. Podcast. <laughs> yeah. that, that yeah, I, Well put, man. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry there. Sorry there. Uh, Valeo. I, I know your beard's in there. It looks good, but you <laughs> boy, the smile you got going on. You shining over there. They didn't put you in one of those denty ice commercial. <laughs> sparkle of just excitement. That's what it looks like over there. You came on the show. You're adding so much energy right now. Like we're, we're on point right now. You need to be a, a third anchor in our show. Let's go. Just bring me on. I'm here. I'm, I'm ready to, to steal the show, man. Just want you to remember my name. That's it. <laughs> Love it. Well, dude, a couple, couple, couple big finishes, man. They call Miley Cyrus, Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, you know, as Bilal well knows, it's important to do some stuff outside the octagon, too, in this game. So you're doing well there, too. Absolutely, man. I, you know, this is the thing. You have 15 minutes to shine. Yeah, you can get a knockout. You can get a, a an amazing finish, a submission. You can have a great performance, but it all comes down to how people remember you, and everyone's going to remember what you say on the mic and how you perform on the mic. We are in the entertainment business, and that's the job that I love the most. I love fighting, but, man, put me on the mic. I like to shine a little bit better. Love that's it. what I say. I say people waste their, like people waste call outs on the mic all the time. And I'm like, I look at them like, bro, like they're sitting there like, all right, you're number 15. You're calling out number one or the champion. I'm like, bro, you know, he's not going to call you. Nate Diaz is not going to answer your call. Like, but like when you're getting on the mic the last two times, I'm like, people are hating on it, but I'm like, you're getting responses from freaking the Kansas city chiefs and Miley Cyrus. I'm like, it's, it's working. Oh man, it, it is working. Hopefully sooner or later, people are going to start doing the same exact thing. They're going to use a lot, utilize the time on ESPN, ABC pay per view to try to get this, uh, use the platform to try to get these call outs, to get these uh, match. And uh, Kansas City Chiefs right now, we're in the process of working a pickleball tournament in Kansas City, hosted by uh, yours truly. And so, could you imagine that, man? How wow, that'd be, be epic. Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and Tyreek Hill in a game that no one knows what the hell it is. That's why I'm going to be the winner. <laughs> I was literally wondering. I'm like, what the heck is pickleball? Bro, it's so fun. If you've never played it, you would enjoy it. It's like literally table tennis. I like it's a bigger platform than table tennis, but like a way less platform than actual tennis. So it's uh for non um athletic people that don't want to run as much. That's literally what it is. And I love it. <laughs> but uh man, so I seen, you know, after two years off of you had a soldier shoulder injury, right? Yeah, I tore my uh lat muscle. I tore the tendon actually off the uh, arm. So the muscle that connects this part of your arm from here to here ripped completely off and I uh, severed it and I had to reattach it and go through that process. But coming back, man, two big wins with what was it, within like six weeks of each other and then two bonuses. 
Like, yeah. man, it, like there can't be a better plan than that, right? Oh, life changing. It definitely is life changing. Literally a year and a half ago, I was struggling at the lowest point. Uh, I, I, I was hurting, couldn't even figure out how to pay rent. I asked friends for help, which I'm glad I have friends to help me out there, family to help me out there. And now, right now, I was able to pay them all back with interest. They didn't want it, but I still gave it to them. And uh, it's just, I was asking for money at one point in time. Not, and I, I don't want to say I was asking for money. I needed help. Yeah. And these people helped me out out of their own kind good. And it's, and they're excited. I just got off the phone with one of them today. And he was like, man, just to see you pay, like just to see what you've done since then to now, it, it's no money could ever pay for what I just saw. And it's, it's amazing. It's been a blessing. Oh, look at is. that pretty face. Hey. What's up, Gerald? <laughs> What's up, Bob? Team testosterone. Look at the beards and the hair. Look at this. Stuff. Yeah, exactly. Big old thick beard. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, hey, I, you, your beard is thick right now. Are you letting your girl? Oh, yeah. You know, my T levels are up. I just had a fight. I got a kid on the way. I'm I'm full of piss and vinegar right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I, I believe it. Yeah, you just had a fight, huh, man? We were just talking off air. Dude, that was so enjoyable to watch, man. You that had to be a great two minutes of your life, man. You, I figured you'd be smiling. Five, it was a five days ago, right? That was beautiful, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I had a great time. You know, I definitely needed that after the you know the path I was on. So I'm I'm happy to be back where I'm supposed to be. The most submissions in middleweight history, right? Yep, yep. Now I'm the standalone with six, and hopefully I can you know make that gap a little bit larger before I leave and make it a little bit harder reach for the next guy Man, i don't know insane. julian julian got two in a row so far he's at three right now so like i don't even know how there. i suck at jujitsu man i don't know <laughs> how stuff, man. I, i've been a, i just got my purple belt i've been a blue belt for six years seven years i just got my purple belt so like are you living hey, in vegas in all about city, julian? I, I live in i live in vegas but i train out of kc and i've been training in kc for the past year Technically staying there as well. Okay. Well, Cody, you know what the you know what the point of the game is? Point of the show is the game show. Let's get the show on the road. See which one of these submission artists is the better <laughs> at trivia. All right, boys, game show rules. Questions go back and forth. If you know the answer, you shout bully. If you get it wrong, negative points. The points will go to your opponent. If you get it correct, the points go to you. Real key is just if you know the answer, just shout bully. Bilal, who's going to pick first? Uh, well, let's look at the categories for today so far. Categories for today, guys. Gerald is a record holder. Big deal. Okay. So these are all the submission <laughs> record holders for the other weight classes. <laughs> Uh, that's a long name, so I'm gonna give you guys. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna say the name, and then you gotta tell me how many letters are in that name. So the first person to tell me how many letters are in that name, that last name, then they win. Face mash. So like you guys saw it earlier with both of your guys, I matched both of your faces together. So this is two fighter faces matched together. And then that's no remember the name, but so these are fighter nicknames. You know, both of you guys have okay nicknames, but. <laughs> we're going to talk about other fighters' nicknames that are in the UFC, see if you guys know them. Julian, you were here first, so I'll let you pick the first category. So if either one of you, but either one of you guys can answer the question, you just have to shout bully first. Okay, cool, cool. All right, let's go. Gerald is a record holder for 400. 400, okay, he's going big. Who has the most submission wins at heavyweight? Bully. Gerald. Uh, Alexi Olenek. What the fudge? Where the heck did that come from? Frank Mir? Come uh, on, Jerry. I'm talking all his wins are by submission. <laughs> well, points go to Julian. Not, not a good start for you, Gerald. Uh, Julian, you pick now. Just avoid all questions and win. There we go. Here we go. Um, let's see. Gerald is a record holder for 300. Who has the most submission wins at light heavyweight? Um, 
Bully. <laughs> Julian. Uh, would it be John Jones? Ooh, he was second. He had oh. five. <laughs> Let's go over to Sarah. You should have avoided all questions. Uh, I went for it. <laughs> You're up, Gerald. Uh, all right, let's do – that's no remember the name, but for 200. <laughs> Zang Wheelie, what's your uh, ring name? Bully. Magnum. Gerald. Boom. Magnum. Hey, I didn't know that. I looked at that. Like, what the heck? Damn. Okay, finally, somebody got a question right. <laughs> <laughs> You're up, Gerald. Yeah. All right, let's do uh, – that's a long name for 300. <laughs> All right, that's a long name for 300. So I'm going to say the fighter name right now. So you just got to do the last name. So Zabit's the first name. Magomed Sharapov is the last name. How many letters are in his last name? Bully. Julian. 15. Oh, you're so oh. close. Oh, oh man. Yeah, it was a, it was a straight guess. <laughs> I was like, man, you didn't even use your fingers or anything. I was like, man, was he studying? <laughs> no, <it's the> best. <laughs> You're up, Gerald. All right. Uh, let's do face mash for 100. Face mash 100. So two fighter faces. <laughs> Bully. <laughs> Gerald. That's that's Rose and Eli Zhang. <laughs> <Jane. laughs> Boom. Okay, Gerald. Now we got a little streak going here. Here we go. You're up, Jared. All right, good. face mask for 200. Face mask for 200. Oh, wait. You picked the wrong one. Your eye hall nickname, if any of you guys know it. Bully. Prime bully. time. Prime time. Julian gets the points. Yeah, I called that bully first. Don't you dare. Don't you <laughs> take that. What did we do it? All right, we're going to go here. I don't. Face mask. Looks like uh, a bully. Julian. It looks like Laura Sanko and <laughs> Yeah, he's the second one. That's <laughs> old ass person is this. Jesus. He's from Kansas City. James Krause. <laughs> hey, <laughs> bro, you looking rough. Oh man, that was an epic one. <laughs> that was tough. <laughs> I gotta post that one on Twitter. <laughs> You're up, Julian. Pick again. Um, let's do, uh, <laughs> oh man, let's do, that's a long name, 400. Long name, 400. All right. This fighter name is Whitaker. How many letters are in his last name? Bully. Gerald. 11. Ah! Where's the math at? Golly. God dang it, Gerald. I really, I was literally going to make a. Uh, a fun facts once because I know you yeah, you know all these weird facts, but you're, you're running down right now. Hey, I got I got two uh, a couple mind blowers for you if you want it to end. Hey, I don't mind, dude. Let's go. We we're here. We like we like fun facts. I'm with it. I'm with it. You should have like a little segment where you take a break and then he ends with a fun fact with real real start. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, I'm just adding on to your show. Let's go here. Let's do uh. That's no, or that's no, remember the name, but for 300. Randy Brown. Fighting this weekend, guys. Man. Trying to get him some air time. Oh, man. I feel like I should know this, too, because you fought him. Come on, Gerald. <laughs> Shows me you study my opponents. Yeah, I didn't study their nicknames. What? <laughs> <laughs> His nicknames are Rihanna song. Oh, okay, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that was a hint. Kelly, I would get it, but I don't. Um, all right, show them what it is. Rude boy, come on, guys. Ah, uh, rude boy. Hmm, fair enough. Um, I said, I don't remember the name, but it's all right. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Pick again, Julia. All right, let's do. Uh, that's no remember the name, but four hundred. Randy's gonna hate us. Marvin Vittori. Boy. Boy. Fuck. Gerald. The Italian Dream. Boom. Boom. I mean, Italian, you got Italian, huh? the Italian Stallion, but it was Italian something. <laughs> okay. All right. We got us up to the game here. 200 point game. Let's go, Gerald. You're up. Uh, let's do face mash for 300. 
Face mask 300. <laughs> Bully. It's Gerald. Bully. That's Ben Askren and Tyron Woodley. <laughs> Y'all stole it from me. I was first. Dude, that oh, is like I got good. that one. I got that one. That, ben that's is- Ben and Tyron. <laughs> that is rough. You are correct. <laughs> <laughs> Gerald, you're up again. All right. Face mask for 400. Face mask 400. Oh, this is the hard one. Bully. Bully. Gerald, what? Uh, that's Uriah Hall and Jake Paul. Wow, you are good. How did you get that one? It was uh, because he's gonna get that one. No, it's because he's got long hair, but it still looks like he's balding somehow. It's a dead giveaway. <laughs> that's uh, it definitely, it definitely, it, it fits. So they fit together. Uriah with blonde hair, that works. <laughs> You're out, Gerald. All right, uh, I'm a record holder for 200. 200. Who has the most submission wins at featherweight? Bully. Gerald. Charles Oliveira. Boom. Ah, yeah. Let's go. All right. I forgot. All right. <laughs> uh, I'm a record holder for 100. Who has the most submission wins at lightweight? Yeah, I got nothing for that one. <laughs> I got a couple ideas, but there's a lot of really good submission guys. So, come on, he has the most fights at lightweight. Bully, Julian, Donald Cerrone. What the fuck, Donald Cerrone? He's not a submission guy. I don't know. I, you said the most fights, but I forgot he just passed Donald Cerrone. Oliver almost had it at both lightweight and featherweight, but that's a fun fact. Points go to Gerald. Well, we got two more questions. Let's. Make it uh, at least respectable, Julian. How many letters are in? Respectable. What was this one? The 200 or 100? Oh, this is the 200 one. Oh, this 200? Uh, Joanna Jerzyczyk. Just a Jerzyczyk. Yo, yo Jacek? <laughs> Just Bully. a yo Jacek, Mark. <laughs> Julian. 16. 11. Yeah. Come on. I can't even spell that. Look, I was <laughs> You're asking me to do stuff. I'm just guessing. All right. Last one. How many how many letters are in Never Gamed 13. <laughs> yeah, both these guys got none of those questions right. That's how what? you play this game. You're not win. You're supposed to be fine. <laughs> But Gerald, you are winning two wins in one week. You're the RTS champion. The floor is yours. How does it feel to be a, a winner? Uh, you know, it feels great. Uh, it was a hard fought battle. Came out, really had to struggle there in the first half, but uh, I rallied and came back and walked away a winner. Man, he's a record holder and he got the RTS championship. Uh, what's it, what, what, was it, what means more to you, Gerald? Uh, you know, honestly, coming on this prestigious show, this, this might be the highlight of my career so far. <laughs> this is the saddest point of my career. I lost, <laughs> on, I, I lost on learning how to spell. I don't know anybody's nickname. And I don't know Rihanna's song. <laughs> Golly. The Kansas City Chiefs are going to watch the show. They're going to be like, you know what? Forget this whole pickleball yeah. game. We're, we're, we're going to move to something else. We're going to move to something. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. I mean, it's inevitable. Fine. Well, Gerald, are you going to play saxophone for us? I have a special surprise just for you since you asked. I'll, I'll just give you guys a little taste. Uh, I, I figured out something uh, before we got on, you know, got live here. So uh, I'll, I'll just play a little something, something for you real quick to make you feel better. Let's go. Got me hyped now. This is how I do it. You know what I mean? I didn't lose because I got him to play the saxophone for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. This is your TikTok right here. Dude, that was hot. 
I love, oh, it. I love it. Thank you so much for that. that no problem. That you gave me. You <laughs> my soul with that. I thought you might <laughs> like that one. No, you just learned that today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the so if anyone's looking for sheet music for the saxophone for Miley Cyrus, uh. It's really bad. I had to figure that out myself. It took like 15, 20 minutes, but I got it done. It took you 15, 20 minutes to read that? So Bilal knows this. Before I was going to fight, I was going to be a music teacher. So, yeah, it wasn't wasn't terribly complicated for me. No way. Okay, so that would have took me 15 to 20 years to even know how to, <laughs> little, know how to play it. That's awesome. That's amazing. Do I have no hidden talents, Julian? Say what? You don't have no hidden talents? Uh, no, I don't. I played the violin when I was a kid, and I was like, that's about it. I don't have any. I wish I was cool like that. You know, do what is your hidden talent? Because we're already bringing this up. This segment of remember the name, hidden talents. <laughs> you know, Muhammad, what hidden talent do you have? I'm not gonna lie. I always wanted to play the. I always wanted to play the piano, but my mom never bought me a keyboard, so I think that would have been my hidden talent. Did you see? Did you see uh, Rose Lamanunas play the uh, piano today? Rose, yeah, she killed it. She's Dude, a monster. I, I, I was shocked. I thought piano was probably the coolest thing growing up because I don't know. I just felt like wealth was tied into piano players. <laughs> because that's all you would always see is like in the movies and everything like that. And dude, she dominated. You play piano too, Gerald, or no? Uh, I had to take like one remedial class, so I learned really, really basic stuff, but. I, I wouldn't even be in the same category as Rose. She's really, really good. I was about to say, she was like next level. I'm like, that's that's not, there's no thug in that. That was, that was some. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was highly educated Rose. Out of all the fights that she's had in the UFC and out of all the publicity that she's gotten, not once have they ever put her behind a piano. And that thing was like, that's the most impressive thing I thought from it because you would think of this, like when you pictured like Thug Rose, you think of this hardcore kid that dominates everybody that she goes with. She gets highlight reels and everything like that. And, you know, she has a soft side, but then you see she has musical talent. That's impressive to me. Yeah, that was, that was next level stuff. That was very impressive to me. But Jason, you got anything for my boys? I, I think I'm good. Unless they want to hang around. We, we got to get to this weekend's card, you know? Yeah. You guys want to make picks with us? I'll play. Yeah, let's do it. Right. Won't take long. All right, so we'll get to it. Cody, that works for you, right? Oh, yeah. Yes, I already I already messed up rolling the stinger already, so you can just get in. Hey, that's remember <laughs> the show. That's live. So, it's hey, live. UFC 261. Us it's always live. Yeah, it's always live. So, Usman versus Masvidal 2. Uh, these odds brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. So, so bully, Bullies Bix overall 61% in the year, 47, 29, and 1. So we always do three picks. We have three title fights. I know a lot of them maybe not be the closest betting lines, but we'll just get through it. So first fight, women's flyweight, Valentina Shevchenko. Big line here, minus 435, Jessica Andrade, plus 325. We talked about this briefly earlier. Bully, I figure you'll start it, and if they want to pick after you, you can show them how it's done. Yeah, I'll let you guys learn from the best. Um <laughs> Man, for me, you know, I think I draw, uh, Jessica is going to keep moving forward against her. It's, it's a different look uh, that Valentina hasn't seen yet at 25, but uh, I think that she's a she's an assassin. I think she's going to light her up. I think it's going to be a finish. I think Jessica's going to be too small for her. I don't think she'll be able to to pick her up and slam her like she does everybody else. But to me, I think it's going to be a finish. Valentina, I think second or third round. Hmm. What do you guys got? I'll, I'll piggyback on that. I think Valentina is actually going to do very well. Um, I think she does better moving backwards. Um, in her last fight that she had, I thought she did very exceptionally well to adapt on the fly against um, what is her name? Uh, Maya, right? Yeah, Jennifer Maya. Yeah, it was, and then she was super strong, um, but she was adapting, moving, and she showed a different part of her game that we hadn't seen. I think that's going to. That her adaption to being the champion, I think she's going to dominate uh, Andrade. I think she's going to finish her within. I would, I, yeah, I'll go with uh, under a round and a half. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much in agreement with both you guys. Uh, I think Shevchenko is much more dangerous from the outside, and not only is she the lankier, taller fighter, but Andrade fights short even for her size. Right? She keeps really tight with her hands. 
Um, a lot of looping hooks, overhand rights that come down the middle. But again, she's leaning in. She's kind of taking away some of her reach. And she has to come forward, and Valentina knows that. And like Julian was saying, Valentina not only is good from the perimeter, but she's good going backwards. So I give her two to three rounds just off of toughness. But uh, Andrade is going to bring the fight. So there's always that chance that she can catch her with something. However, I think Valentina keeps her distance. She pecks away at her and lets her run into something in second or third round. Well, so all three of you guys like it inside the distance. So the so the betting line minus 435. You can actually get Shevchenko plus 135, I believe. One of the handicappers on it, to do it inside the distance. So, so oh, wow. for the gamblers out there, if you like Shevchenko, maybe inside the distance is the play. Second fight, women's strawweight title. Zhang Wei Li, Rose Namajunas. This is actually the closest fight according to the Vegas odds. Um, you know, so what's Zhang has won 21 straight fights. I mean, we, I think all of us probably have been following Rose for a long time. So Bilal, um, why don't we let these guys, why don't we let GM three lead off on this one and we'll go reverse direction. Who do you his, break, his breakdown was epic. I'm about to say they, they need analyst jobs right here. They're about, they're about to earn it right now. I hear you. Yeah, no, I think this is very similar to the fight we were just talking about, right? Uh, Wiley Zhang, a little bit better with the reach, but again, the shorter fighter, very physically strong. I think she's got the edge on wrestling. I think Rose has the edge once it actually hits the mat. She's got really good jiu-jitsu. I think Rose is a little more dangerous on the outside where she can throw kill shots and snipe, where Zhang has to come forward. And she's got a motor to do it, but she's got to throw numbers. Uh, I think if Wiley wants to win, she's going to have to get inside the clinch, wrestle her up a little bit and throw some knees and use those elbows. However, I see Rose doing it, maybe not in the second or third, like we were saying before, but maybe pecking away enough to get a finish in the fourth or fifth round. Oh, okay. I like That's tough. Uh, I actually, this one's a very tough fight, um, in my opinion. I think the line is actually very far apart. Um, I don't see Wei Li Zhang uh, minus 200. I could see her at like, I could see this being minus, you know, 120 plus 110 type of fight. Uh, again, I think it's going to be fight of the night. I'll predict that right now. I think Whaley's going to be way too fast. She's going to, she's going to move laterally and she's going to strike. Rose is hard to put out. Rose is hard to finish and vice versa. But, uh, in all honesty, I think it's going to come down to the actual like wrestling. Like who's going to put the wrestling on who I, I believe that Rose is going to try to wrestle fast and early to put that into our arsenal and Whaley's going to have to defend it and get that into the clinch, but it's going to be on. A, it's going to be a distance fight. I think it's going to be a similar to the Jun Jacek versus Whaley Zhang fight. And I just see judge split decision. We're going to go Whaley Zhang. Ooh, you guys are split right there. So I guess the only pick that really matters is mine because it's called <laughs> Bully's Book for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> but man, yeah, I don't know. Rose's boxing looked very crisp even her last couple times out. She looked very good with her jab. And then Trevor Whitman, man, he's a genius. He has good game plans. And I think the only difference between this fight and the Joanna fight is Rose has better grappling than Joanna. I think that Rose brings it, uh, something else to the game. And I think that if she gets her down, if she gets her back, I think Rose could tap her out. I'm going to think I'm going to go with, uh, like you said, a split decision. But I think Rose is going to take this one. I like it. I'll get back it. All right, main event, gentlemen. Uh, Usman Ooh. versus Masvidal. No Leon Edwards in this title fight, bully. Right. <laughs> um, anyway, I know you're sick of me saying it, but Usman, there just constantly say there there are levels to this shit, you know. And is Masvidal on his level? Um, I, you know, I don't know. I'll let you guys, bully. Why don't you lead us off on this one? What do you got? Upset uh, we'll here. Go or what? First, since uh, Gerald went last. There you go. Oh, I'm quite out. All right, <laughs> this is one thing. The one thing, when I when I ride with you, I ride with you no matter what the analysts say, no matter what the result is. I'm a ride or die. And being a fellow Cuban, I'm going with Jorge Masvidal. doesn't matter. There's something about Cubans and their heritage and then just their want. They're gamers. We're, we're here to stay. Like, whether – I think it's going to be a completely different. Whether he wins or not, I believe he will win. But it's going to be a fight, and at the end of it, Kumar Usman is going to remember the name Jorge Masvidal because it's going to be his toughest fight to date. He's going to bring it to him, and I'm going to go with him all day. I don't care what anyone says. That a boy. That oh, a boy. That, oof, that was very emotional right there. <laughs> I I, I, I res yeah, I respect the uh, – I respect backing your man, but I'm going to have to go the other way with it. Kamal Usman has looked very dominant, you know, in his run up to the title since he's had the title. 
you know, he's put guys on their back and dropped guys that haven't been dropped in any fights previous. His hands only continue to look better. His cardio shows no signs of waning. Always comes in shape. You know, he's physically bigger. He's a little bit longer. Uh, like Blau was talking about, he's working with Trevor Whitman now, another guy under his tutelage, and he's really learning how to use the length. He's switching stances, throwing good jabs. I don't see what Masvidal can do differently, even on a full camp, uh, to really do anything other than possibly catch him, right? Because Masvidal is a vet. He's crafty. Um, he's going to throw some big explosive shots in there. You know, it might not be the flying knee, but he's going to explode with that stutter step one, two. He's going to throw some kicks up there. You know, he's going to try to make the fight interesting. I still see the fight going the distance, but Masvidal's traditionally had trouble with guys that can grapple and take him down. And on top of that, we now have a new threat in Kamaru Usman of being able to use his hands. And keep in mind, Usman's also had time to prepare for George Masvidal. So I think we're going to see a completely different fight in that sense. Uh, I think it still goes the distance, but I got to go with the champ on this one. Remember the name? Another, we, got, we got another split here. For me, I think this this fight is honestly, I think it's a lot closer than everybody's uh, think it's gonna be. Um, to me, I think Usman winning his last fight by knockouts gonna make him think that he could stand with uh, Masvidal. He's gonna he's getting making a personal thing. I want to finish him, and if he comes out with that mindset, trying to knock him out, Masvidal I think has better stand up to him. And like you said, Masvidal has that explosiveness where he could he could catch you with something and knock you out, but. Uh, Masvidal is a hard guy to take down. Masvidal is a hard guy to hold down. And we saw that the first fight, even with six days notice, he was still able to get up. He was still in there to the fifth round. And you saw a couple times in that first fight where Usman would just like duck his head and like just reach and try to grab him and push him to the fence. So obviously Masvidal, I think, was hurting him a little bit. He says he has a broken nose from before, but I don't know. You never know. Everybody always lies. Masvidal seems in great shape right now. Uh, he says he's not, not a big weight cut. He's always in great shape. I think this is going to be a real close fight. I think it's going to be a split decision. But I think I'm going to have to go with uh, Usman in this one. I think the takedowns are going to be the, the key in this one, getting those uh, stealing rounds with takedowns, pushing to the fence. And, I mean, we see it with a lot of guys. They, they get comfortable laying on the fence with Usman, and Usman will stay there all day if he has to. He doesn't care if it's a boring fight or not. Like, he'll stay there and make you make the, the refs make him break it up. All right. Perfect breakdown. And it's true, though. I mean – you're winning. At that point, you're winning. It doesn't matter. 25 minutes against the cage is, is still a victory, and you're cashing two checks. So whether it's it's about the game plan on this one, I'm very – I'm very I'm invested. I'm here actually in Jacksonville because I had to come to this uh, this fight. There's no way I could miss it. Oh, you're but, going. Yeah, I'm in a hotel room. This isn't my house. <laughs> I'm in oh, a hotel room. Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah, you – Maybe you need some decorations with that fifty grand or something like that. Look at that stove. Look how small that little stove is. It's like a half house stove. You're putting crack cocaine on Easy bake cup. Like, What's going on right there? Yeah, the uh, yeah, I'm here at uh, UFC two sixty one. Um, I'll be there at the uh, the weigh-ins ceremony, weigh-ins tomorrow, and I'll be there at the fights. And there's no way I'm missing this, man. Like the first event for the UFC with all the fans there, three title fights from cards. It's stacked from top to bottom, bottom to top, whichever way you want to look at it. And there's a real question. Are you vaccinated? Uh, me? No, I'm not vaccinated. <laughs> but I had COVID. So I don't think. There I'm you vaccinated. go. You know, Gerald, you had it? Dude, imagine if there were fans five days ago, Gerald, in the building. You know? I mean. It's just, yeah. it, it, I mean, I know there's a different experience there and there's an intimacy and all that, and it's special in its own way, but um, that would have been, crowd would have been going nuts for a vet like you doing that two minutes. You oh, know? Absolutely. Yeah. I was going nuts, man. I was just, <laughs> me too. <laughs> big transmission. Like I was, dude, the, the lines were completely way closer than what you made it. Way closer. I think you were the underdog. And on oh, top yeah. of it, like, no one saw that coming. Like, no one saw that. I'm like, oh, he's going for the choke. I was like, what a setup. What a lean. And it was, just, it was beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. I appreciate display. that. Question, though, for you fighters. Do you like fans or no fans? Fans. I like fans. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fans guy. And yeah. when there's fans there, I can hear Bilal screaming and try to corner me in the crowd very clearly. <laughs> so I have an extra advantage. <laughs> <laughs> That was, a, that was against Deron Wynn. That was, that was the last show that we had with fans, right? <laughs> yeah. You were the last that show That was the last fans. one, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I was thinking back to it. I was like, man, I remember, man, what's the last time we went to a fight with fans? And then I was like, oh, yeah, it was the Gerald fight. 
I was like, yeah. God dang, that was such a good card too. That was Joanna against uh, dang, that was uh, Wei Lee too. That was, that was her last fight. She too, didn't have yeah. to do any fights without no fans either. That right. is by far one of my favorite cards, and that is by far the probably the greatest fight I've ever seen in person is Wei Lee versus Young Jacek. That that fight yeah. was real. Oh yeah. That was yeah. That was next level. You were watching it from the back, Gerald, or were you just like celebrating? I was watching in the back. I had to watch that one. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good one. Yeah, this weekend I'm, I'm super stoked for this whole entire card. This week I'm super stoked to to actually feel the energy of the fans for the first time after an entire you know year and some change to have no one there. I honestly believe that it's this this event is going to change the outcome of UFC fights. You know, when people can hear the fans, when people can tweet live, when they, they sit there, I think it's going to boost us up even more. And they're going to show out like, I mean, think of it. We have a sold out arena at Vice Star Memorial Arena. And it's just, think how loud it's going to be. Think of how loud it's going to sound on the, the the broadcast. And just, dude, it's going to be unreal, man. I'm, I'm stoked. Are Getting the broadcasters going to be next to each other or no? I, I think, think so. so. Yeah, oh, I think yeah, they're going to be next to each other, which I'm glad you asked because, like, John can't wait for that. You know, that's fun being right yeah. next to it. You know what I mean? It's like you're six feet away. It's just different, you know? Um, it's so. very cool. So, like, the USC has this thing called Clear, and it is uh, – you have to fill out all your medical information – or not medical information, fill out your ID, get your uh, face screened up before it. it's like a medical-style deal that if anything does happen, Clear is able to contact anyone and everyone – you know hey like someone tested positive someone was there at the venue so you uh. can get tested so everyone that's going to be at the event has to download this uh, uh this app called clear and literally it will, it will keep you updated with anything if anything does happen um you are it's optional to wear your mask you can wear a mask if you like to you don't have to uh and everything is completely safe they keep the fighters still away from all of us because i have teammates on this card and i've asked to see if i can go train with them and they're like no they they want hmm. they want to keep everything precaution they're going to keep the fighters away from us post fight so like after they fight they go back to the hotel or they stay in back at the uh -huh. venue they just can't uh they can't mingle in with the crowd so the ufc is going to be completely safe when it comes to it they're going to keep everything there and the fans are going to be the safest possible and it's it's pretty they've they've got their they crossed their t's and dotted their eyes on this one i'm it's pretty cool yeah, you got me hyped about it. All right. Yeah, well, both you guys on the, on good tracks off big wins. So we look forward to seeing you back in the building with fans in the building. And nice breakdown as well, gentlemen. You know, the UFC always has eyeballs on those desk gigs. So well done, boys. But we appreciate both of you being on very much. Great to meet you both for me. Um, root for Brendan Allen. I know these two, your boy fighting this Saturday. I got to shout out BA before yeah. I get up, you know. So. Yeah. Oh, he's fighting Robertson, right? Yeah. Yep. Let's go. I Let's love him. Go. Exactly. Thanks, Thank you, boys. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you both of you for coming on. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Have a good it. Night. Yeah, Brendan Allen. We also got Chris Weidman on the card versus Uriah Hall. Um, oh, dude, Aaron Weidman is like in the best shape of his life. Like, looking yeah. like a 70 pounder right now. I'm like, man, I want to see, dude, I want to see that fight. I'm excited. I do too. And, you know, I, on the Anakin Fury podcast, they're talking about that. I mean, both fighters, you, you both fighters got to win that fight. You know, it's yeah. a, it, to, to try to think that there's any type of championship trajectory for the loser of that fight. I don't see it. Um, yeah. It's like next level. You, you, it's one of those fights where it's like, you're either going to do it or you're, you're like, you're going to be started looking toward retirement after that. So it's exactly. like, Yep, exactly. Right. And and obviously, he's always been so close every door, right next to the door every single time. And then he always blows us. So like, I, you know, I want to see that. I hear you, man. And, you know, Weidman obviously has, has you know, achieved, you know, the, the pinnacle in the sport. Uriah Hall, you know, a lot of people think sort of in that, you know, prime for himself. So we'll see what happens there. So anyway, we got Kenny Florian, Ian Parker. Congrats, Ian Parker, the duck, by the way. They're on the on PFL Friday night, ESPN2. So you got to check that out. Um, Shout and out to Showtime so fighting tomorrow. What's up? Showtime fighting tomorrow. Anthony Pettis. That's right. That's right. Debut. He, I he's love about it. to be the face of that uh, that company. It's gonna be big. Hundred percent. Like they're putting it all behind him, so he just got to come out there and perform. He looks in great shape. I can't wait to see him fight. I I agree, man. And it's interesting because PFL. I mean, well, I'm still want Lewis Taylor to come back and fight. That's still my <laughs> sort of PFL that I'm hoping for. But anyway, can't wait to watch. Can't wait to watch Saturday night. Uh, fans are back, man. I just can't wait for it. So anyway. I think that's it for episode 24 for our director, Cody Merrow and Bilal. Remember the name Muhammad. I'm Jason Anik. Have a good night. Enjoy the fights. Peace Later. out, guys.